Um, yes, I'm Stephen Bucks, the lead developer for RM and uh, Cloud Studio Geo. Um, feel free to ask questions at any point. Unfortunately, you've got me presenting twice today, and I'll let you decide whether that means you're lucky or unlucky. Um, okay, so um, introductions. We did those. Thank you, Fergus. Um, to begin with, I'll, um, I'll be outlining the, the key goals we have with Studio Geo. Um, I'll be talking about the, the core concepts um, we're going to need for, um, for producing an MVP. Um, I'll talk a bit about um, a few of the different projects that are currently ongoing um, by the development team um, going into, into this product. Okay, so what is Studio Geo? Well, it's a, a, a tool for, for structural modeling. Um, the idea is to streamline routine tasks. Um, there are lots of things that uh, you want to do um, on a regular basis, and making those as easy as possible um, is the goal with that. Um, we also want to improve the ability for when one user uh, leaves and another one takes over, that needs to be as, as kind of a smooth uh, handover as possible. And it's going to be built on the same core functionality. So if you're used to using any of um, Studio's other products, so P, UG, um, Geo will also um, kind of work in a similar way. Okay, so there's, there's kind of three main parts to this. Um, firstly, there's uh, the drill hole uh, importer, which I'll be talking a bit more about later. Um, but this is really about um, improving the experience when importing and validating your data. Um, you want to check for errors and, and fix those. So that's uh, kind of the first part. Uh, secondly, uh, this geological model. Um, when you get new drilling data, updating that geological model with that new data. Um, and there are lots of, uh, those will be used as inputs to things you've already run the data through before. And making sure that those settings are remembered and passed through to, to the next stage is kind of an important part of this workflow. And there are, there are two tools that I'll be talking about later, uh, the fault, a new fault modeling tool and a dynamic modeling tool as well um, that, that kind of make, make up the main parts of that. And as I've talked about already, the, the shared data management, um, allowing one user to, to kind of go off on leave or, or fly out and someone else just um, pick it up um, with continuity. Okay, so um, we're kind of between section two and section three here. So we're, um, we're working on different projects that um, will be combined into the, the main um, product. Um, we're, we're hoping to, to produce an alpha um, in the middle of next year. Um, this is a, an, ongoing, um, an ongoing development with, with kind of lots of different tools that are being incorporated. And I'll talk about those in just a second. So to begin with, we've, we've got the, the drill hole importer. Um, this is for updating drill holes. Um, once you've chosen the settings that you've used before, uh, you can bring them in again and validate, and, um, and then it should be an improved experience for, for bringing those in. And also validating, checking for errors, um, and making sure that those can be fixed up. Um, that's another important part of this tool. So I now have a video. Hopefully this will work. Um, so this is a, a new tool that uh, has been developed. Um, here we've got existing um, faults that have been modeled from some, some strings. Um, and the, the dialogue remembers that um, and picks those up automatically. If you've got Mapping data, it's very easy to, to produce a fault surface um, from those, um, and they're dynamically generated. Um, and if you want to extend um, these faults to a certain distance, that's very easy to do, um, both up and down. You can also decide to um, extend it to a prototype or a boundary string if that's what you prefer. Um, if you decide that 
the, the direction that it's extended in isn't quite right, it's really easy to change that. Um, so here I've just changed the diff default. Um, and making sure that the fault terminates on another fault uh, is, is very easy to do. Um, if instead you want to choose your own um, faults, you want to digitize them yourself, that's also possible. Um, and uh, you can digitize those straight into the 3D window. And as you digitize your second trace, it'll automatically fill in what the fault should look like. These are, these are things that you can already do in Studio, but um, it's likely to be more fiddly. Um, and this, this is a far smoother experience for, for producing your fault wireframes. And again, with this, this fault, you can choose an extension distance and, and say that you want it to terminate on another fault. Um, and this, this is gonna be an important part of GEO, but it will also be appearing uh, in RM early next year. Okay, and now there's a, another, um, another tool that I'll be talking about. So this is the um, dynamic surface modeling command, and this is something I've been working on. And um, so this is about producing a, a, a combined uh, resource, uh, sorry, geology, structural model. Um, so uh, making a consistent model based on your input wireframes. So I'll play this one as well. So here we've got three inputs. We've got uh, a topography, um, uh, a contact surface between two rock types and a vein. And uh, each of those we can choose different settings for, whether we want to fill inside them, fill above or below, east or west. Um, and each of those we can also, um, we can also decide um, what values we want to write to the, to the object. Um, so here uh, we've, we've produced Kind of a single structural model, and it's filled out to the to, um, the prototype, and it's been kind of cut below the topography, um, and it's it's been produced based on the rules that we've input for the different um, wireframes that we have. So now we're gonna we're gonna filter out the different objects so that we can see actually what's going on inside. Um, so on one side of the rock, we've got um, we've got both inside and outside, and on the other side we've got the same. And now just filtering down to the, the vein itself, we'll be able to see the, um, the vein coded both one side of the rock and of the other. And then we can do similarly for, for the, um, the, kind of the waste, so everything that lies outside that vein. Um, and this can be extended to as many surfaces as you need. Um, so things that you produced via the vein command, the single surface command, or the, the grade shells or categorical. And as you can see with this slice, um, we've got we've got a um, two wireframes here where where it cuts um, cuts inside. Um, yeah, and that's everything on um, Studio Geo. Um, any questions? Um, so a, a timing thing so this one was produced after another yeah. and if you just set up that all up beforehand exactly. then it, yeah exactly so I guess this is this is an important part of geo is that um, setting up information beforehand so that when you run through it's um, many settings can be automatically worked out that you know that this part you know happened before that and the same with the dynamic modeling so if you've got a vein and you know that appeared after 
then it's going to cut through in a certain way and all those things we should be able to work out so yeah absolutely yeah, we'll, just going to do germination. yeah so once you've set up this is the ordering yeah absolutely yes how do you model the camera you use over a couple of years ago into that model mm. you be able to recognize the data coming in yeah coming in and how we yeah, absolutely. So that was a question about uh, new data coming in and how we'll be able to handle that. And yeah, that's 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 really the idea with that. So when we get things coming in through drill hole and porter, um, say now there's there's a new set of drilling, um, we will link to the to the old the old drilling that the old object that we had, um, and all of those settings that you pass through to all the different tools. So the if you produced a vein from those drills. And um, we'll be able to remember what's happened to that, and it'll it'll be passed on through. So yeah, that we can when you get new data coming in, um, the the specifics of the that new area will be will be new, but as a as a whole, we'll have remembered settings that you've used, um, and we can flag to see if there are if there are important changes. Um, you know, maybe it's now twice the size, you know, or something like that. But if it's kind of just a little more drilling in a certain area, then we can we can kind of carry that all through and, and just kind of let them use and know that we're using their, their settings. Anyone else? Thank you very much.